In this episode of Fabilio Talks, I will be talking with Eric Herzog, IBM Global Vice President of Storage Channels, about cyber resilience. You don't want to miss it. Check this out. Okay, hello guys, Abilio here from Abilio Talks, and um, I have the honor, not only the pleasure, but uh, I have the honor to talk with one of my vice presidents at IBM, Eric, Eric Herzog, and uh, he's VP of Storage Channels Global, and uh, also VP of uh, Business Development and Evangelism. Um, thanks for... Uh, accepting my invite eric that's a, a real real honor to me to to be talking to you about technology thing a uh, thing that i really love how are you well thank you for inviting you know the ibm storage division and uh, we're here to answer the questions and talk about how we can help our end users with their applications their workloads and their use cases so again we appreciate you inviting us to participate thank you um tell me uh since I was a business partner a long time ago uh, uh, in my home country, I, I, I hear about you. So you you were there in the company for a long time, right? So tell me a little bit of, about your story, if, if you yeah, don't mind. So, so actually, I've been at IBM a total of eight years. Um, I came to IBM for the last five years from EMC. But I also was at IBM in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, so actually, I've been at IBM a total of around eight years in two different stints. I've been here for the last five years, came here as a senior vice, was a senior vice president at EMC uh, and ran both product management, product marketing and carried a P&L of roughly 10 and a half billion US dollars. But I also was at IBM uh, from 1998 to 2001, IBM's hard drive division bought one of my startups. So I've actually been at IBM twice. Uh, my entire career has been in storage. So I've worked at MacStore, the hard drive company, IBM hard drive division, Seagate, a hard drive company, EMC, but I've also worked at seven storage startups. One of them didn't make it, went bankrupt. One of them is still out there. I'm on their board of directors. And the other five all got acquired. IBM bought one, as I mentioned. Um, NetApp bought one. Dell bought one. So my companies have luckily uh, mostly been acquired uh, on the startup side. And my background is everything from storage systems to storage software and spans the gamut from the OEM side of the storage industry, the end user side of the storage industry, and the channel side of the storage industry. So all three key routes to market, as I've roughly spent a third of my career in actually each of the three uh, key routes to market. Nice, nice. And and uh, is that your uh, academic background? So so you uh, no, that in? My background is not technical at all. I have a master's degree in Chinese history from the University of California, Davis. So I'm oh. an engineer. I'm actually very technical. I would encourage so, you know, your end users and partners to watch uh, my myriad of videos on the cube and other places. So you can see I'm exceedingly technical, but I picked up storage by being a storage doer. I don't have a electrical engineering degree or computer science degree, but I can go toe to toe in most situations from a technical perspective on on storage technologies. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. Uh, I guess that I will book with you a time to talk about only your master's degree, but that, that will be in the next episode. No, no, we don't need to talk about this now. So yeah, well, very amazing. So, um, uh, well, as I, we were chatting a, a, a few hours ago, so I don't know if you heard, but uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, one of the health organizations here, uh, um, they suffered an attack from hackers and uh, just crippled the all IT systems. And it was so bad that the, the doctors were not able to do their services and deliver their uh, service to patients because they didn't have access to, to the IT systems. So uh, met uh, prescriptions and uh, the health state of a certain patient. So that, that was that bad. So, uh, and uh, in theory, 
uh, that uh, that organization was protected, right? Uh, uh, against well, they they had backups. They they have like a disaster recovery. So, uh, did you have that experience in your in your world or some of your clients that they could share? So, no, absolutely. Cyber attacks have gone through the roof since the pandemic, and already had dramatically accelerated since 2010. Whether that be industrial theft, people getting in and trying to just steal secrets, whether that be malware attacks or ransomware attacks all over the world. And in fact, in addition to that experience you had in New Zealand, uh, just this week, the largest meat producer in the world, which is headquartered in Australia, shut down by ransomware. I read today they just started uh, opening up the factories again, and they are all over the world. They Largest meat company in the entire world. A um, couple weeks ago, the Irish healthcare system was attacked and it actually shut them down. So if you needed to go to the doctor, almost identical to what happened in New Zealand, that's public. And then the largest natural gas and oil pipeline in the United States, Continental, uh, also was down for five or six days due to a ransomware attack. So, and by the way, the bulk of the malware and ransomware attacks are not publicly reported not publicly reported. So it is a huge issue. Billions and billions every quarter is lost. Um, and that could be a ransomware you have to pay, but malware. If you have malware and it destroys the data, you have to recover from a backup. You've got to go do it. And that costs you time and money. And also your opportunity costs of not making money because your systems aren't working. And in the case of, of course, theft, people get in. They find your IP, whatever it may be, whether it be a customer list, whether it be the specifications for the coming flash system product line, whether it be the new car design at Toyota or Mercedes Benz. And guess what? That stuff gets stolen. So you have pure theft, you have the malware, and you have the ransomware, not to mention disgruntled employees. So cyber, in fact, KPMG, which as you know, is one of the largest uh, consulting groups in the world, and also one of the top four accounting companies on the planet. They do a twice a year survey of CEOs, not CIOs, okay, not IT people, but CEOs. Yep. And in the recent survey that KPMG released, it's right on their website, you can Google it, which was from March of 2021, so not even three months ago. And it said, what are the greatest threats to your company in the next three years. Not your greatest IT threat, but your greatest threats. So of course, I thought it was gonna be recession or health or not enough educated workers. The number one threat, according to CEOs, is cybersecurity. Oh, well, so that's- That's the is public. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So number one, CEOs cited as the threat to their business for the next three years Cybersecurity was the number one threat. Okay. Well, and 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 that's uh, why I provoked the question because uh, our CIOs and CTOs from from our clients uh, here in Asia, uh, in Oceania as well, uh, uh, they come to me and say, "Hey, um, what happened in Australia, New Zealand? Are we covered? Uh, what can we do?" and um, well, what was missing over there, which I, I don't know the, the infrastructure uh, and uh, it, it was not IBM, but even though uh, uh, my, my point was more, uh, the, their point was more like, uh, uh, what is missing in my infrastructure? Did I did something wrong? Uh, uh, Abelio, uh, can you clarify to me, how can we be uh, like, not bulletproof, uh, handsomeware proof, but how can we improve our cybersecurity, our resilience, sure. and to make sure that we're not going to experience this type of situation that you just described. And I, I was talking about this, this organization here. So can you give me some ideas on how we, sure. we can address? So the first of all, CIOs, CTOs, chief security officers, if the company is big enough to have one, need to recognize that a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy involves cyber and data resilience of your underlying storage infrastructure. So it's not just software to keep the bad guys out. It's not just software to track the bad guys down. 
because you can't track the bad guys down till you know. Yeah, indeed. Talk, talk to CIOs and executive leaders all the time, and many of them admitted to me, sometimes they don't know something's wrong for two to three days. Sometimes they don't know for two or three weeks. So that's true. That's an overall cybersecurity strategy involves including storage as part of the data resilience and cyber resilience to respond to these attacks. So that's the first thing the end user needs to do is recognize storage is critical in a full cybersecurity strategy for the entire company. Item number one. Second thing is IBM storage can help in a couple different ways. First of all, we can offer a free cyber resiliency assessment. No cost to the end user. We could go through and help them understand that. Secondly, IBM corporate for the whole company has what's known as a cyber range. Think of it as a think tank or a, if you will, a garage, like an IBM garage, but dedicated to cyber. So you can use our cyber resiliency assessment from the storage division and use the cyber range, which is more, which is broader than just IBM storage, of course, to yep. look at your overarching strategies. Those are three things that the end user needs to do. One, the recognition that if you don't do storage, that's a problem. B, use our free cyber resiliency assessment, which will focus on the storage side. And three, is the cyber range, which I'm not sure if there's a charge for that or free. I'm pretty sure it's free, but yeah, we'd have to get back to the end users and our channel partners on that aspect. But those are the three things we can do, independent of the fact that the IBM storage division has designed and built into a number of our products, data resilience and cyber resilience technology that's already in the products. As a, but, but these are things to do beyond just getting to the product level detail. Oh, and uh, th thanks for that. And uh, uh, when you you were mentioning about uh, uh, the customers uh, not being aware that something uh, bad happened, and um, I was reading about uh, uh, when uh, once once uh, this happened, I started reading more about uh, other companies that might suffer uh, uh, about the same ill. Let's put it this way. Uh, and uh, they are all uh, were surprised because there was a long time since the attack and the impact. So basically, uh, you just nailed in, in your answer. Uh, uh, weeks, I mean, sometimes months later, they discovered that they needed to roll back like two months ago on their backup. So and that's too late. Imagine losing two months of inform information. So that's that's very, very critical, right? Well, and that's what... Well, you got have to have an overarching cybersecurity strategy and recognize that aside, uh, in addition to keeping the bad guy out and chasing them down, you know. So let's take the easy case, ransomware, okay? Yep. If you have recent good backup copies, snapshots or replicas, I don't need to pay the ransom, I just can recover. So the way that a cyber criminal can do ransomware is they don't just look at your primary storage systems, they look at your secondary storage systems. They have to control your backups. They have to control your snapshots. They have to control your replicas. They have to control your archives. And once they've done that, which could take weeks for them to do, by the way, technically, and they know that, then you can attack the primary storage and ask for the ransom. Because otherwise you just go to a known good copy, a known good backup, a known good replica, a known good snapshot and say, I'm not paying you any money. So ransomware, involves not just primary storage, which of course is where they eventually hold you for ransom, but actually understanding and from their perception as the criminal, capturing all the backup data of all types, backup, archive, snap, replicas. Once they have that under control, you can't say, I'm not gonna pay you, right? Malware is different because malware can be used in a number of ways and one of which could be data destruction. In which case you can yeah, bet it back. But to do the data destruction effectively, same thing. If I'm gonna do malware, and let's say I've decided I wanna destroy the data, I need to also destroy the same data sets sitting in a snapshot, a replica, or a backup. So an overarching cyber criminal attack involves not just your primary storage vehicles, but all of your secondary storage vehicles as well. Because otherwise you just go to a known good copy which is a backup, a snap, a replica, you know that doesn't have it. So that's why both malware and ransomware involve 
both primary storage and secondary mm-hmm. storage. And you've got to be able to help on all of that um, to give you the right peace of mind of knowing that if you do get an attack, at least your storage can help you resist that attack or recover to a quickly to a known good copy, right? And and, and, and that's and, and that's where I, I I was chatting with a client from 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 Thailand and uh, last week and uh, and he said, well. I have a, a, a it, it def, definitely something is missing here because I have this technology. I do the backup and uh, and I say, well, uh, just just to let you know to protect you from any ransomware or malware. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. Well, what I mean by that is that it is not just one solution. You need to have a whole uh, uh, sort of tools to to handle that. It is not just the backup software. It is not just the backup repository; it is the architecture, right? Uh, it, did I did I surprise? No, that's, that's, no, that's absolutely correct. If you're going to build a home, you need a saw, you need a hammer, nails, screw, screwdrivers. Uh, you have to pour a foundation, so the tools you need to do cement. You've got to be able to do the plastering of the walls. You need paint brushes because eventually you paint the house. So when you look at the tools that a contractor uses to construct a home or to construct, and when you construct an office building, you need even more tools because usually most homes don't have elevators. So you've got to do all kinds of things. If you're building an office building, right, or an apartment building of multiple stories versus just building your home. So think of all those tools. Having the right resilient storage technology involves the same thing. So as an example, data encryption at rest. Great. If they attack your data at rest, you need to encrypt. Well, guess what? A lot of people won't encrypt their data. Okay. That's a problem. Second thing is when you move data back and forth to the cloud, well, guess what? It can get stolen. Maybe it's good if that was encrypted. Okay. Backup. As I mentioned, malware and ransomware, if you're going to do it right, if you're a really good criminal at it, you're going to control secondary copies. Well, in our Spectrum Protect product, we can detect anomalous activity. Well, if you have anomalous activity, if your backup window always takes two hours and you haven't dramatically changed what you're backing up and all of a sudden it goes to four or six, we send you a notification. Now you have to check it out. We don't do the checking for you, but you need to check it out, okay? We can air gap, which creates a physical barrier or a logical air gap, which creates a logical barrier. So for example, all of our technology, Spectrum Scale, Flash System, our DS family on the mainframe, all can do seamless hybrid cloud connectivity. So you do a snapshot to the cloud periodically. Don't just snapshot on-prem, which you need to do, but snapshot periodically to the cloud. That snapshot to the cloud creates a logical air gap or tape. Back up to tape, that creates a physical air gap. Okay, we also have technology to help you rapidly recover if you do have a malware or cancer air attack. We currently have a product known as Safeguarded Copy on the mainframe, soon to be coming beyond the mainframe. Stay tuned and see what we're announcing on July 20th. Um, so we'll have Safeguarded Copy expanded in our portfolio. That's all I can say. But Safeguarded Copy allows you to create an immutable version what in the storage world is known as worm, write once, read many. So you can create these immutable versions, which means it can Mm -hmm. be changed. Yep. Now, then you can recover to a fence network and we can create up to 500 copies. You, You pick the interval once a day, twice a day, once every two days, whatever interview you select. Those can't change. You can make up to 500 copies, which if we do once a week is 500 weeks, by the way. If you do one mm-hmm. day, it's 500 days over a year. And then you can recover to a fence network. The software team, you know, the IT team, that's not the storage guys, need to make sure the malware and ransomware isn't there. Boom, then you do a full on recovery. That of course assumes you've cleaned the malware and ransomware off your primary storage and primary servers. Okay, if that copy has the malware or ransomware on it, great, you go to another copy, which is immutable mm-hmm. and you check that. So this we have safeguarded copy. We have malware and ransomware sort of semi-detection. 
We have encryption at rest and in flight. We have the capability of creating both physical and logical air gaps. All those are what storage can help contribute to this overarching corporate-wide cybersecurity strategy. And this is why you can't leave storage out. And IBM has gone out of its way in, this, in our storage division to make sure that we have a number of different ways to help you from a malware attack, a ransomware attack, or we didn't even talk about corporate theft. So let's assume yep. they actually steal it, right? Sometimes people go on vacation, they get home, their TVs are stolen, their stereos are stolen. Nothing you can do, right? Your insurance pays for it, you buy a new one, okay? Well, what if someone steals your primary copy and your backup copies of your new drug you're developing or the new car you're developing? Well, guess what? If they stole that data, if it's encrypted, they can't use it. It's encrypted. They can't use it. If it's not encrypted, guess what? There's the car design, the drug design, the design for whatever it is you're working on, your IP. It's your customer list, right? It's a competitor. So, you know, even, even theft can be helped with the, in, the encryption technology that we deliver. So at IBM Storage, we try to provide all of the parameters you need to have data and cyber resilience in your storage systems to complement storage security, which are, sorry, your overall security. By the way, you can't just do storage security either. You need to have an overarching security strategy, which the end user needs to recognize or the business partner selling to the end user yep. that a comprehensive strategy involves data resilience and cyber resilience in your storage technology, as well as the other security things you need to do for your entire IT infrastructure. And that's why IBM can deliver some real value to the end users and to our business partners that sell to those same end users. Yeah, and 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 that's uh, that's pretty much it. Because uh, uh, I was, uh, I I believe uh, I I have a master's in, in security, so so in, in IT of security. So uh, I, I was reading uh, one of one of the books about the concepts of, of of cyber resilience, and there is process, there is technology, of course, and there is people, right? So, and uh, we're pretty much covering everything with not only products, but with services, right? So when, when we do an assessment, we, we can we can kind of uh, point out what are the vulnerabilities that we need to work on. And with our technology and with our expertise that we have on the team on board, we can deliver a solution. And uh, with a such uh, uh, deep, deep dive details that uh, it is a, good experience ongoing when when handling this type of thing so yeah that's that's awesome um what i can what i can say eric i guess that you're a very busy man so i, I don't I, i'm not going to disturb you uh anymore so i i just love it the the tips and hints um i guess that uh do you have any any final comment for for our uh, viewers and listeners and uh, around the globe? Yeah, I think yeah. the key thing is they've got to realize that IBM storage is not about speeds and feeds. IBM storage is about applications, workloads, and use cases. It's about how we optimize your SAP or your Cassandra. It's what we do to enhance your AI, big data, and analytic workloads. It's what we do to reduce your CapEx and OpEx, what we do to simplify your operational manpower. And we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone on storage speeds and feeds, and quite honestly, in 85 to 95% of the cases, we can outdo them on storage speeds and feeds. But storage speeds and feeds is not all there is about storage. It's how storage is essential to your business. And today we just talked about it. You have a cybersecurity strategy and someone gets in and you don't know it for a week and they're stealing your car designs and you haven't encrypted the car designs. Guess what? They've got your car designs. Same thing with malware and ransomware. So at IBM, it's all about how our storage solutions fit into not only your technical characteristics that you need, but the business characteristics to optimize your overall business value, not just the technical value. And that's what IBM Storage brings to the table that many other storage companies, having worked at a ton of them, uh, as we talked about when we started the interview, just don't do. And at IBM Storage, we take that comprehensive view that storage is, is truly an essential technology but also essential to your business, and here's why. And this discussion of cyber and data resilience just shows 
how if you don't have the right storage, it doesn't matter if you've done all the other security stuff because it's not a comprehensive solution. It's a partial solution. Storage is part of that, how you solve the problem. And that's what we talked about today. So that's sort of my closing on, you know, why IBM storage is truly different from the other players in the market, thinking beyond just the technology to the business aspects and other aspects that have nothing to do with the IOPS, the latency or the bandwidth of the storage. And we make sure that we excel in that, but we also make sure we excel at the other aspects like cutting your CapEx and OpEx or make it easier for your storage team or your IT team if you're a smaller company to manage your storage estate. And that's all about really how do you accelerate and automate management and create storage efficiencies that have nothing to do with how fast the storage is, right? And that's okay. that's our vision at IBM and what we've been delivering now for several years in the IBM storage division. Love it, love it. Um, well, thanks heaps, uh, Eric. And um, this is a very special video talks. I hope you guys have enjoyed as I certainly did. So we catch up in the next one. Cheers. Great. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you again in another podcast. About the, the your master degree, for sure. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. And have a uh, good weekend, yeah, which you're getting ready to start. It's still Thursday here in California. Yeah, it is indeed.